Savita Singh, partner Khetan and Company, joins us from the Mumbai studio. Savita, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the property show for the first time and hope we'll see you more on the show. Let me take the first question. We've got Mr. Surinder Pal on the phone line. Mr. Pal, go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Madam, I am 75 years old and it was my last desire in life to breed last in, in my own premises. I had booked an apartment with Ira Adam Landmark Limited, uh, which was allotted to me in Cosmo City One project in October two, uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. So after remittance of 25% cost, I was sent a buyer agreement, which was signed and sent back by me to the buyer and returned to me thereafter, by virtue of which I was to get possession after three years, within 36 months, uh, by 6th April 2015. Right. This, has not, uh, this has not been done till date. In between, the developer has been asking for additional amount and received amount equivalent to 30% of the total cost of the uh, unit allotted to me. And the uh, last payment was made in June 2014. Thereafter, the developer has abandoned the project and, uh, and is not doing anything. Mr. Bhatia, I mean, my, my heart goes out to you and buyers like you. This is ridiculous. I mean, the, this is just broad daylight robbery and they're getting away with it because despite the fact that, uh, Savita, people put their largest chunk of savings in buying a home, this has been an unregulated industry. Here's a case where the builder has actually gone to jail and he's out on bail. So really, I mean, what is the, what is the solution for the buyer? Is, is RERA going to take care of it if there's a regulator or, or should he just go and file a case in the court? I mean, at 74, I feel so terrible in saying that go. I mean, imagine, is this the age to be going to court and fighting and taking on builders? Provisions have come into force on 1st of May. Which provisions basically uh, relate to uh, procedural part and which basically define, uh, you know, deal with the definitions, how uh, authority will be established, procedural part or the appellate authority and, you know, which is basically not relating to the rights and obligation and functions of the promoter or the rights entitlements of the flat purchaser. So these are very procedural in nature. And as regards the offences, etc., also related to uh, the the defaults under the Act, that has also been not notified. Mm -hmm. Notified. Mm -hmm. So, as and when it is notified, that is when uh, that is when you know you can actually proceed for the defaults of the promoter under the Act. But Savita, that will take uh, a long time because this year the notification which has come is that okay now states have to actually put together. A regulator and an appellate tribunal so so we are actually looking at a two-year period isn't it where a buyer will actually be able to go to a regulator at a state level and lodge a complaint so two years from now is isn't that the right summary uh, let me just tell you as on date what I find very effective is proceeding under the Com consumer protection act okay. All right. which Fair is enough. very speedy which is kind of you know uh, 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 pretty, you know, uh, sympathetic towards the uh, consumer's complaints and the recipient of service. I mean, the flat purchaser has been considered as a recipient of service under the consumer protection laws. And these services, which builder is to provide to the flat purchaser, they classify as services. So they can proceed un under the Consumer Protection Act. And there are plethora of judgments where the courts have granted relief, where the Consumer Forum has granted relief, whereby they have not only ordered for uh, refund of the entire monies paid, but also interest and penalties. So, which is a very welcome, uh, you know, legislation, and which, and and let me just also point out, there's another provision under RERA, which, which is Section 71, under which all consumer court cases which are pending as on the date of the notification of the concerned section under RERA may be shifted. All the consumer cases related to, the, to this may be shifted to uh, shifted under the uh, RERA and it can be dealt with the, uh, by the authority. 
Okay, Savita, so that's a good insight. So you're saying that Mr. Bhatia, don't waste some time. Right now, hit the consumer court, isn't it? But my question is, if the builder has already been to jail and he's out on bail, so what can happen? I mean, at worst case, if he does not pay the fine, return the money, he'll be thrown back into jail, isn't it? The question here is, how does he get a house? There's no choice of, I mean, they may not get a flat at the end of it. I understand. So in that case, if he's not getting the flat, which I feel in this particular case may be difficult because he has already violated. I don't think he may have the funds or he may have the capability to actually complete the project. I think what he should do or who, what I would advise is actually maybe terminate the agreement and, you know, file a complaint with the consumer court. Uh, making the whatever are the allegations or whatever are the breaches uh, uh, which uh, the developer is uh, uh, guilty of and then take let the proceed let the court take its course okay i have uh, booked a flat this is vishal messi um, he's written in and he's saying i have booked a flat in jp green sports city east yamuna expressway for my mother They've committed to us that they will provide us the flat in August 2017. However, till now, they haven't even started. Okay, Savita, I think this whole episode can be dedicated to JP Group. But the fact of the matter is that forget about this, not starting this one. They haven't even delivered projects where they've taken 90% of the money from buyers. Over 30,000, almost 35,000 buyers are stuck. What do you say? What can you do? Again, go to the consumer court first? Uh well, uh, that would be my advice because as in today, I feel that is where you get the speediest justice. And in this case, though, uh, if I correctly understood, uh, the possession date is not yet due. It's not. They've not even started excavation. So the project hasn't started. I'm, I'm just surprised that if it was a yes. payment linked plan, how is it that the builders even taken so much money uh, up front? I mean, if the project hasn't started and it's a 30 lakh rupee flat they shouldn't have collected 16 lakhs even that is illegal but they have and unfortunately the buyers don't really read the agreements they just the demand comes from the developer and they end up paying it isn't it that's true so if it was meant to be a uh, you know a, a statement uh, uh, a payment which was meant to be on various thresholds then of course he can uh, uh, approach the consumer court because there have been breaches on that front. And of course, we need to look at the agreement to be able to fully under understand and appreciate what the uh, agreement between the parties is. But you have a fairly good case because there, if it was meant to be a threshold related payment for which, I mean, you could have only paid once that threshold reached. So. It's not, I mean, you can definitely sue him for breaches of the agreement. The question to you, Savita, here is, and, and you know, for coming from the legal fraternity, explain to me, here is a group which owes, you know, tens and thousands of crores. The figure we have is 75,000 crores to banks. And here is a group of buyers, 35,000 buyers who are stuck across NCR. The first lien on the assets or anything that the company generates out of selling its assets is going to go to the bank. So literally, it's the buyer who's completely defenseless. And for the money that he's paid, he has literally no way of getting it back, isn't it? Thankfully, once RERA comes into force, we'll have all these, uh, you know, at least we'll have some remedies in the sense if the builder fails to complete the project, then the authority, uh, the first right of refusal to uh, develop the project would be with the allottees, the association of the allottees. If they are not keen to do it, then authority can, of course, either appoint a separate developer or some uh, competent authority or any other measure that it thinks could be helpful for the project. All right, so sir. those provisions, that's why we are all awaiting RERA coming into force. All the provisions would be quite revolutionary. Okay, fair enough. All right, we've got time to take just one last call. The list is so long, Savita, that we will probably forward them to you and get some response from you to help out these hapless buyers. But we've got Gaurav Jain and let's take his question. Gaurav, hi, go ahead. Thank you for waiting by patiently. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, hi, Gaurav here. My question is that I have paid my total amount uh, to the builder and they are blocking my registry and uh, they are forcing me to sign one uh, 
A4 page uh, document, which is uh, called settlement document, and we haven't done any settlement with them, and uh, they are forcing me to sign that document. Otherwise, they are blocking my registry. My all legal documents has been signed by me, and uh, till date we have paid every amount to them, including the court fees and advocate fees. But from last two months, they are blocking our registry. Wow! Is there any solution for that? Savita, this is very, very strange. Everything has been paid. He's even paid stamp duty, and they're asking them to sign a settlement document. What is this about? Where is this project? Mm -hmm. This is the Ajnara project. Okay, okay. So this in is Noida. UP basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in UP, of course, the Act Section Four provides for that. You know, within uh, two years of the completion certificate, you need to convey and you need to, you know, also provide various documents to the flat purchaser. Though I do not find any penal provision, so I don't find it has much teeth. But as I said, if you go to the consumer court, because of the failure of not being able to convey, though you have the documents you've executed, you have paid the entire fee, entire consideration, it's your, uh, it's, it's, it's your right to get it registered in your favor. So you can approach the consumer court and you can have it, you know, have, uh, of course, file the complaint and uh, uh, pursue it there. And it's, uh, like I said, it's very speedy. It's, uh, it's the best remedy as on date as I see it. You may go to the civil court, but that may take a little longer. You may, you may also be able to, you know, take proceedings under the criminal, uh, you can take criminal proceedings also, like Section 420, 405. These are basically cheating and uh, criminal breach of trust and stuff like that. So all that also you can take, but as far as uh, refund of your monies and any kind of monetary interest or any compensation, for that you will have to go to the civil court, which is either a civil court uh, which is uh, or, or, a, or a consumer court. Hmm. Wow. I mean, I'm just looking at the list of questions and saying consumer courts will have to either multiply or get lots and lots of more people to actually take care of these cases. Savita Singh, it's a pleasure to have you with us.